he reiterated a religion of pure monotheism, one which in its monotheism resembled Judaism, um, in, in insisting on absolute monotheism, uh, but which also made a, a place for the, the person of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ was honored as a prophet, and that was kind of an incorporation into Islam of an aspect of Christianity as well. Um, it involved a minimalist state that was a very unarticulated state, replacing tribal conflict, a new system of law in which justice was to be impartial and not to be just tribal, uh, in which the head of state was supposed to be humble and subjected to the same rules as the people, in which there was supposed to be religious tolerance for non-Muslims in the Muslim state, a fixed minimum amount of uh, wealth or money devoted to relief of the poor, and the Prophet provided an example of how people should act and treat each other as is found in his sunnah as recorded in the hadith, which is a has a great uh, ethical collection. This is in the opinion of uh, a scholar um, that Islam uh, evolved a balance uh, between the temporal and spiritual and also presented a um, ritualistic aspect that was somewhat exacting but could be upheld in general by everybody. Not quite everybody, of course, because some people, if they're incapable of upholding some of the parts, then they don't have to because you can only do what you can do. And then there's also the universality of the call, all believers becoming brothers and equals without any distinction and sisters, without any distinction of class or race or tongue and the only superiority is a superiority, the personal superiority, as, as per the verse that I just quoted. Um, this is one opinion. Another opinion I didn't put here is Arnold Toynbee, the famous Christian historian who opined that, um, uh, who started out when he wrote his study of history with the opinion that uh, with a kind of Christian bias and then migrated to a more ecumenical position by the end of his work and life. And he thought that in Islam there were two things that especially stood out to him as being excellent for the world. One of them was the prohibition of uh, alcohol, which was a bane to the common people of the world. And the other was the prohibition of racism and the getting rid of racism and the universality that was actually lived and acted by the Muslims in that aspect. So these were distinctive features. We already studied, I believe, how Islam spread outward. So that's kind of superfluous to revisit that. 